methods. This is the section that should be the easiest and most straightforward to write. Yet, yeah, if you're here, possibly like many other students, this is where you got hung up and stuck. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you our guide and our framework that makes writing the method so easy and simple, you'll think this was the fastest section to put together. Why didn't I just start here? So what I'm gonna share with you today is two important writing principles that are gonna go beyond the method section that you're going to wanna use across the board. I'm going to, as after all it's YouTube, share with you a secret tip. That's another tactic that's gonna help you publish. And we're going to go through a complete guide framework of every ingredient that you're gonna need for your method section. No matter what type of methods you're writing, whether it's a chapter for your thesis, if it's for a systematic review, a quantitative or qualitative paper, it's gonna be the same framework, the same core guiding principles. And this all comes from our fast track system. Hey, if you're new here to this channel, I'm Professor David Stuckler and I've helped hundreds of students publish in high impact journals. Students who had no research experience at all or maybe failed many times before and just weren't able to crack the code, often not because they weren't capable, but because they just didn't have the right support and guidance and a proven system to help them. So today you're going to get a little bit of a sampler of this and if you're interested in more, click the link below for a free call with somebody from our team and we can figure out how we can impress way, use this system to help you finish your research fast. So diving in, methods. So first principle, this is where you start. Now, this might be counter to a lot of what you're told before, where maybe you go in a way, write the introduction, then maybe you get to the methods. No, methods is really your first point of departure for writing. And for many students who have been stuck, it's because they sometimes don't know what they want to say or they don't know how to say it. But the thing with the methods is, well, you know what you're doing. You know what concretely you're studying and how you're going about it. So in a way, it's more natural and more easy to write up because you're describing what you did. What process you took and nobody in the world knows that process better than you because you've just done it. So I recommend writing the methods kind of just as you've completed them as well. If you think about the timing in the process and the flow, um, that's because it's fresh. Right? If you come back and you try to write your methods two years down the road, you might not remember the ins and outs of what you did. And so it becomes very natural to integrate writing into your research flow when you write the methods just as you've done it. The second principle for writing the methods is that you want to keep things linear. So imagine your methods as writing a recipe that somebody else can follow. And indeed, this recipe making is part of what sets us apart as scientists is that we do things that are replicable so that other people can look at our data, look at what we did, check our assumptions, question us, interrogate our data, and see if they come up with the same conclusions as we did. That reproducibility is at the heart of science, and to make that accessible is going to make it more robust, easier to get accepted, easier for your viewers to understand, you want to write in a linear way, just outlining for people the process that you followed. So what does this mean? Sometimes I see methods sections from students and they started with their analysis, but they haven't described their data. And so if you look at your method section or others, you'll see that it can be hard to follow if you're kind of zigzagging, jumping around from one point in the process to another. So the basic principle here is that I want you to follow a linear timeline chronologically in your writing. Okay, let's turn to the four components that you're gonna need to have, and these often flow quite nicely. First thing that you wanna drop in the method section is a type of study. What method did you use effectively? And so it could be, was it an experiment? What kind of experiment was it? Was it a systematic review? Was it a quantitative analysis of different flavors or kinds or qualitative analysis? So you need to locate what type of study you did right up front. And that's usually straightforward. It could be a line, two lines, not more. Sometimes you want to justify that choice of method. And that may be something that can sometimes come earlier in the introduction. This will depend on how you're planning to set things up, but I recommend to go ahead already now in your methods and justify why you chose that method. That may move later on, be aware of that but it's good to already put it there now. Usually having some citations to others saying, following the methodology of so-and-so, we did this method. That can also be really nice to 
corroborate and support that you're using the method that's right at the frontier of your field. Second major ingredient you need to explain is what we call the data generating process. How did you get your data? And in even in a literature review, in everything you do, you have data that you're looking at. In a literature review, your data are the studies. In others, if you did a survey, you need to explain the dynamics and the mechanics of that survey. What questions did you ask? Who did you ask? And so you want this to, again, follow a very linear flow. Taking qualitative research as an example, your data comes from interviews. So you want to explain, well, how did you invite people to interview? What process did you use to identify them? What uh, approvals did they have to give? And explain that. So you usually would have, for example, in qualitative methods, that recruitment strategy is the next component of your methods. And then to get the data, you presumably in qualitative research, you would have conducted interviews. So what was the content of that interviews? Uh, what did you ask them? So then you need to explain, hey, next section would be semi-structured interviews, and you would include what kind of questions you, you asked. So whichever type of research you're doing, if it's an experiment, right here, you're going to be explaining the, the methods that you use for collecting data, for qualitative or quantitative, how you got that data. In quantitative, it might be already existing data. You might put a link and show where that database was or explain what data sets you linked. Third component, now that you've got your data, is the analysis. So what tools did you use to interrogate the data against your research questions? So oftentimes in quantitative, it's really a statistical analysis section. You really want to say what the type of analysis was. So for qualitative, you might say we did a, a phenomenological analysis. We did a thematic analysis, a content analysis, whatever it is that you did. And then you want to describe that. Again, it's helpful to justify that analytical approach, add citations to others who maybe had similar data and interrogated it in the same way using the methods that you're doing. Because again, here, you want to not reinvent the wheel completely. Often in science, we're making incremental improvements using that cliche of standing on the shoulders of giants to just look far and go one step further. So try to establish that everything's on a solid foundation. It's going to make you seem more credible and more believable so that everything is solid and people will agree with the contribution that you're making. And finally, the, the fourth component after you got the analysis might be any ethics or funding approval that was involved, or if you had any funding that went into the study that could create a conflict of interest and how that was managed. This tends to be the case, especially for qualitative work, or if you're involving uh, sensitive groups, vulnerable groups that you had to take specific precautions, uh, or maybe go through an institutional review process. This is often the last section of the methods. Again, the principle is you want to keep this linear so that imagine if somebody were trying Trying to repeat what you did, it would just be a step-by-step -step guide just explaining what you've done. My final tip and principle here on the method section that will really help demystify it and give you a concrete vision of what you're trying to achieve is something we do with all of our students is to find what we call a nearest neighbor paper. So go out there and find that paper you wish you would have written in your field, a paper that's very close to yours and follows the same kind of method that you're taking. And use that method section as a guide because that's going to be the nearest neighbor. It's going to be very close to yours, and it's going to be a model. And now, uh, again, you want to use our principles, you'll sometimes find, well, you know, Professor Stuckler, this paper actually started with the analysis and then I explained the data later. Yeah, well, sometimes papers, even if they get published there, they get published despite defects and deficiencies. So by using our systems, you're optimizing your chance that your paper is going to get in a high impact journal. I want you to still fault, make sure that you write your methods in a linear way, even if your nearest neighbor paper doesn't. So guys, if you follow these tips, start with your methods, write it in linear, make sure it includes all these components, the type of study, your data generating process, the analytical approach and its justification and the ethics funding or any approvals involved, you're going to find that writing the method section is a breeze and you'll wish all the other sections of the results, the discussion, the introduction, everything else could just be that simple. And it can be, and you're going to want to see our subsequent videos for our best tips on writing those up too. See you in the next video.